you can get accurate and consistent color in four or maybe five easy steps. I don't know, I didn't bother to count them. Hello world, my name is Matt Spa and I'm a photographer, videographer, and drone pilot in Atlanta, Georgia. It's a frustrating time to be a drone pilot in Atlanta, Georgia because in the last four months, the southeastern United States has received more rain than I think it has in my entire life up to that point. Every day it's gray, and most days it does indeed rain, so I'm stuck in the studio, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. I shoot almost all of my YouTube videos in here, but I never work from this angle because when it's sunny outside, the light coming through those shears is so bright that I would need an incredibly bright key light to be able to light myself and get a good exposure without all of that blowing out. All this testing and running back and forth has meant checking color often, and I realized I'd never done a video that shows my process for getting accurate and consistent color, so that's what I'm gonna do right now. Step one in the process is to buy an X-Rite Color Checker video. This video is not sponsored by them. I wish it was, because this thing is not cheap but it is totally worth the money that you have to pay for it. I have this one that I use for video. I also have a small folding model that I use for headshots, and I have my talent hold that up to their face, and it gives me some reference to adjust color from. Step two is to set the white balance in your camera. This side of the color checker is a non-reflective neutral surface. Every modern camera, I'm sure, I'm almost sure, I'm guessing. I'm assuming, it's gotta be. They've gotta all have a way to set white balance within the camera when you're shooting video. For me to try to explain every brand and model here would be absurd, so you're kinda on your own. I realize that's not super helpful, but find a way to do it, get this, and then do it. You point this basically at a reference point inside the camera, you actuate the shutter, and it gives you a reading in Kelvin, which is the color of light, and then it will give you some adjustment information maybe toward green, or magenta. But with that, your camera is now capturing accurate color, at least in terms of white balance. Step number, what are we up to? Three is to use the other side of the X-Rite color checker, which has this series of swatches on it. There's some swatches in the center that will allow you to correct for exposure, some flesh tone on this side, and then some reference colors on this side. And the trick to using this is, if I hold this in front of my face, I'm going to obscure the microphone, but I'm going to hold it right here. How's that? The trick to using this is to get it pretty centered in the frame. Don't let your fingers cast shadows over it. That's kind of huge. And then if you angle it, take a look at that bottom black square. You see I'm getting reflection, I'm not getting reflection. You wanna angle this until you are not getting reflection. If you're working by yourself, like I often do, it's good to have a cheap light stand. Hang on. This is the one that I use. It's a super cheap light stand and it has this little clamp thing that goes on the top, which is fantastic for holding reflectors of all shapes and sizes. I just put this in here for white balance. I can go back to the camera and collect it. Normally I'm in the frame and the first thing that I'll do when I'm shooting my video is to hold this up for a few seconds, angle it a couple of different ways, and then you've got some footage that has these reference points on it. And that's the key to consistent and accurate color from camera to camera, from location to location, is having something that doesn't change. This is your reference. And by using some really simple tools in Final Cut Pro, which is what I'm gonna use, you can set your color so that it is consistent and accurate. So now that we have some footage, let's go to the computer and make those adjustments. I have created a new library, I've created a new project, and I have dumped my footage into the timeline. If you shoot any kind of log profile in your camera, in my case HLG, the first thing you need to do, which I guess would be step number, what are we up to, four, would be to tell Final Cut Pro what kind of footage you're working with. So if you're shooting S-Log, that may be applying a LUT. For me, shooting HLG, I need to go to the inspector, I need to go to color space override, and I need to change it to Rec 709. Now I have flat footage that I can start working with. Take a look at the left side of the screen. At the top, we have a vector scope, which gives us information about color. And at the bottom, we have a lumoscope, which gives us information about exposure. On the lumoscope, we see a representation of everything that's in our frame. This hump right here is representative of this window. These shadows down here are my shirt. 
these lines that we see here, one, two, three, four, are representative of these bars that are in the frame. So we have a white one and we have a black one. And what we want to do is push this white up to the 100 mark. Anything that goes above 100 on the lumoscope is an area where we have blown out the highlights. There's no more detail information beyond this bar. Same thing on the bottom. Anything that goes below zero means that we've crushed our shadows. It means we no longer have any detail information in the shadows. So going over here to the color inspector, we have some color wheels that we're gonna to use to adjust the exposure. On all these wheels, the left side shows saturation, the right side shows exposure, and the center shows color. So all we're gonna do is adjust the exposure and the highlights by grabbing this little arrow and pushing it up until this white bar is just about to hit the 100 mark. We're gonna do the same thing with our shadows. We're gonna grab this arrow and pull it down until this bar is just about to cross the zero line. You can see we've lost some detail information in the curtains that are over here on the edges. That doesn't really bother me at this point. What I want is just some accuracy so that we can get to adjusting the color. The next thing we wanna do is bump our saturation all the way up. So on the master wheel up here, we grab this arrow and we push everything all the way up. Now we have saturated color as much as we possibly can, and that's gonna make it easier for us to check these reference points against the reference points that we have on the vector scope. And this will be step number five, which is making actual adjustments to the hue of specific colors. Look at the outer edge of the vector scope. For each of these six colors, we have a square where that color should be. This line right here represents the blue color swatch. And that blue color swatch should be terminating at this blue reference point on the vector scope. It's just a little bit off. But if we go over here to the green, here is the green swatch on the color checker. Here is the green reference point on the vector scope. And we can see that our greens are pushing toward yellow. Red is off as well. This line right here represents the red swatch on our color checker, and it is not lining up with the reference point on the vector scope. This is really easy to fix. Go back over here to your color inspector and click on the color wheels. We get the option to add a correction. The correction we're gonna add is the hue and saturation curves. This gives us lots of graphs that we can play around with hue and saturation. The one we're concerned with is the top one, hue versus hue. What I wanna do is grab the eyedropper, click in the green square on the color checker, and we can see we now have a control point that's been added. This control point represents that color. If I hold down shift on my keyboard and I move this up and down, take a look at what's happening on the vector scope. No other colors are having significant change, but that green box is moving. If I pull this down, I can adjust this until this green is hitting this green right here. Because we still have the eyedropper, we can do the same thing with red. Eyedropper clicked into the red gives us a control point here on the graph that we can move up and down. And you can see how this would have some serious implications to flesh tones. Take a look at my face. Blueberry girl, Oompa Loompa man, I don't know, what's green? Martian boy, I don't know. We're gonna take this and push that up until the red is hitting where it's supposed to on the vector scope. Let's fix the blue. Clicking on the blue, we have a new control point that we can pull up and down, and we're gonna pull that below just a hair till it's lined up. Cyan looks good, green looks good, yellow looks good. At this point, I like to move my hue and saturation curve up in the effects panel. Now I've got that baseline correction, and we can turn it off and turn it back on. You can see the shift, particularly in the red. If I click on the color wheels, I can take away that saturation adjustment that I added. And what we have now is a properly exposed and color corrected image that we can then go apply additional color grading to or LUTs or anything else that your heart desires. 
You've taken the reference points on the vector scope and you've aligned them with the reference points on the color checker video. And that's it. Simple steps you can take to get more consistent, more accurate color. If you like this kind of content, please consider subscribing, give me a thumbs up and ring my bell and comment down below and tell two friends. Thanks so much for watching. I will see you in the next one.